All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, good morning. My name is Adam Archer. Um, I'm a member of the VTC committee. I'm uh, happy to uh, welcome you as a co-host to this workshop. Um, Saigon South International School is honored to be hosting the ninth annual Vietnam Tech Conference in collaboration with Eunice Hanoi. Um, it's my, my honor to introduce to you uh, Carlos Diaz. He's the head, of, head librarian at the American School in uh, Vietnam. He's going to talk to us about class craft and how to turn your class into a year-long role-playing game uh, in this workshop. So uh, he's a teacher librarian. He's got a lot of experience in gamification, game-based learning in libraries and media literacy. So he believes in the power of play and that games have a rightful place in school. So welcome, Carlos. Over to you. Thank you, Adam. Hi, everybody. I saw a lot of uh, familiar faces around here. I'm glad to see them. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Carlos Diaz. As Adam uh, told you, I'm a teacher librarian, and I, I like games. I really like them. There's going to be extra points for the people that can recognize the game in my background, right? Where am I right now? I'm in a game that is very famous. It was famous in 2020. And uh, it was the game that actually made a lot of people keep their uh, mental health during the pandemic. Wow, that was fast, <laughs> very good. This Animal Crossing New Horizons, that is correct for the Nintendo Switch. Animal Crossing New Horizons, I'm in a random island. This is definitely not how my island looks uh, because I'm not a very good designer, but it, it's, a, it's a pretty island. Today, I'm gonna tell you about Classcraft, I am um, honored to be um, joined by Amy McCauley. You're gonna find her in the chats as well. She is uh, part of the, of, of the Classcraft team. So she is uh, officially part of Classcraft. I'm just a teacher that uses it. Uh, she is gonna be able to answer questions related to how the system works, uh, especially on the administrative side. I am going to be able to answer questions uh, regarding uh, about Classcraft uh, from the teacher's side. Now, Classcraft. Class, Classcraft is a learning management system that is completely gamified. It lets you turn your class into a game and you can apply it to pretty much every subject that you can imagine. I added uh, a handout that will allow you to create an account of Classcraft that we're going to play today. If you couldn't create it, I invite you to create it now. If you don't have access to it because there are too many people and I did, I did have a limited number of accounts. Uh, I am going to also show the teacher side on the presentation today. So don't worry if you're not able to create an account. If you are able to create an account, power to you, you're gonna be able to play. If you're not able to create an account, don't worry. I am going to show that side here as well. So let's begin. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share how Classcraft looks right now. In three, two, one, here we go. So this is Classcraft. Classcraft pretty much turns your class into a role-playing game like the ones, uh, like the likes of Dungeons and Dragons. It allows each student to have an avatar and create a, a character on their own. And that avatar is going to be tracked during the whole year, depending on the activities that they do in class. And uh, each avatar has an, a specific amount of set point uh, of points. Uh, let me check mine right now here. Here's mine right now. Uh, it's, it, it has uh, health points, ability points that they can use, uh, they can use for their uh, abilities and, and powers that they can use in game or in class. Experience points that uh, tracks their growth during uh, in the game, but also is tied to what they do in the class, meaning every time they do something uh, that demonstrates their learning, they get experience points and gold pieces or gold points that allow them to buy gear and customize their look. But it's better that I don't tell you too much about this. It's better that we actually play the game on our own. And I'm going to begin the student introducer. You're going to be students today and you're going to watch how I introduce Classcraft to the students using the student introducer. All right, let's begin. Welcome 
Welcome to Classcraft. Classcraft turns your class into a game that'll last the whole school year. You'll be playing in teams of different characters. By working together, you'll level up and earn powers that give you real benefits in class. Let's take a look at the game rules. Your teacher is now the game master. Whatever they see you doing, good actions in class, like answering a question correctly or being helpful to You turn up your microphone or something? Sounds not Yeah, the sound's not on um, anymore. Ray Callos? Your sound is off. You mute. You mute so the audios we cannot hear. The warrior, the mighty defender of your team? For the healer, who's ready to revive your teammates at a moment's notice. In addition to earning great powers, you can also gain gold pieces or GP for leveling up and going above and beyond. These will let you customize the look and feel of your character. So, are you ready to start playing? Set up your characters and let the adventure begin. Hopefully some of you have created the character story for the sound glitch in the beginning. Um, you didn't miss too much, uh, but uh, some of you already created your characters. As, as you can see, Classcraft is a game that you can control on your side as a student. And, and as a teacher, you, con you pretty much have the setting of controlling uh, all the avatars uh, in game. In the game, you're going to have uh, experience points that uh, will allow you to level up. And the more you level up, you get more powers and more uh, perks. These powers are set up completely customizable by the teacher, so you can actually give the powers to the students. Let me give you an example. In my library, I give the power uh, for them to be able to check out more books that their limits. Uh, they, they have a limit of two books per week, but they can use their ability points in Classcraft to use the power of the sage, and they're gonna be able to check out more books. Now, to unlock this power, they need XP. And to get this XP, they need to uh, learn and demonstrate learning in the library. I tie my XP to demonstrated learning, demonstrate standards, demonstrate that they can use the library correctly. And uh, that's what XP does. Uh, health points, usually are tied to um, behavioral uh, issues that when they are behaving in a way you're, you're not expecting them to, you or behaving in a way they're not expected to, they lose health points. However, I add up a little bit of uh, random danger and uh, sometimes they lose health uh, randomly because of random events in the game. Whenever they lose uh, uh, all their health points, they must complete a pledge. Uh, it's something like a sentence that they must complete uh, to be able to uh, continue uh, playing. In the game, they're gonna have three types of characters. The guardians that have very specific type of powers, and they're usually uh, there to protect other people in the team. You have the healers that are going to be able to heal other people in the team. They are able to replenish the health of other uh, players. And you have the mages that are able to share energy, ability points that are necessary to use the powers in the game. You also uh, have the ability to put them into teams. Right now, if you are in the game, I created three teams, V, the team B that has this character. So if you have one of these characters, you're in team B. Team uh, T of BTC. If you have one of these characters, you are in team T right now. And team C of BTC, if you have one of these characters, you are in team C right now. These teams, you can make them compete against each other. You can make them collaborate depending on what you want to, to do. Now, I already let you create your characters, so we are ready to play. 
I want you to explore Classcraft on your own. Right now, you are a student, and I want you to explore Classcraft of you, on your own. How do I want you to do that? I want you to go to the Quest tab. And in the Quest, you have a quest that you can do that will teach you how to use most of the Classcraft abilities. During this time that you're doing this quest, you can ask any questions and I'm gonna be able to answer. Uh, also, Amy is here to, uh, to answer any questions that you may have uh, regarding this quest. And I'm gonna be tracking you as a teacher. You're gonna be able to see how, do I, how does the teacher look at the progress in the quest uh, in this screen. Uh, all right, let's begin. You can begin on your quest. Try to complete it as fast as you can. And try to um, do it on your own without trying to uh, ask for much of hints. It's better if we uh, explore on our own and discover all the um, all the perks and, uh, and possibilities we have inside Classcraft on our own. All right, guys, let's begin. The first one is the introduction. You should uh, be able to click the introduction. And there's a story there. I uh, put, I can put the story as a teacher in the teacher side. I can put the story in here and I can edit it. And I'm going to show you how it looks also, the edit side. Here I have customization possibilities. I can add pictures, I can add videos, I can add links to different sites to uh, create the story. It's always better in a gamified class to add some narrative because it's going to make them connect better with the game that you're making. If you complete the story on your own, you should be in the Shrine of Kindness right now. Now, the Shrine of Kindness has not only story, it also has a task. I can set up the task on my own here. I'm going to show you how the task setting looks. I can edit and I can write here what the student needs to do to complete the quest, the task of this quest. Whenever they complete the task, a new task is going to be open. They only complete the quest when they complete the entirety of task. Right now it's asking you to send a kudos. I have not explained you what a kudos is. I want you to find it on your own. There is one of these tabs on the left side in your class craft, that is the kudos uh, um, tab and will allow you to send a kudos to somebody else. I want you to try to send kudos to somebody else. Let's see if anybody has. A lot of people are trying to complete some, see, a lot of people completed the task of kindness right now. And I can see it in my notification as a teacher. A lot of people has completed the tab of kindness right now, and I can see it as, um, as a teacher. And a lot of people are sending kudos right now. I'm going to show you how it looks on the teacher side. Right here, I can see the kudos that you have sent and that you are sending. Great job of learning more about Classcraft, Yeehaw. Now, the teacher can see this, but the students can't. This is important that you understand. Teachers can see this, but the students can't unless you approve them. Kudos are supposed to be nice thing that, that students send to each other. It's not like a, it's like a kudos. It's, it's some, saying something nice, something kind to somebody else. So you only approve them when you see that it's actually something good or something that uh, aligns with your standards. This looks pretty neat. I hope you're enjoying the experience. Let's see the white garden. I can mark the kudos as something really good to give them extra points, or I can just leave it as it is. And I can approve it. I usually click auto publish here and I can approve it so that it's admitted in the shrine of the ancients. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a moment. I am going to approve a couple of more kudos here. I'm going to give a double XP to this one. I'm going to approve this one here and one more, just one more kudos that I'm going to approve. I'm gonna give double XP to this one over here. Very good. 
And those are the kudos that I'm going to meet for now. All the kudos seems great, seem great, but I'm those are the ones that I'm going to meet for now because I'm, now I'm going to show you one of the tabs that you have as a teacher, which is the class tools. Here you're going to have all the gamified tools that you can use in your class. One is Shine of the Ancients. And here you're going to see all the kudos that you have approved. And you can show them and present them to the students. And this way you can boost social emotional learning and empathy and a good behavior between the students. And I know, I know that this is extrinsic motivation, but there is enough research out there that proves the, that ex ex extrinsic motivation leads to intrinsic motivation with enough repetition. So if you keep kudos happening, in the class for enough time, you're going to see changes in the, in the behavior of the classroom. I can tell you as my own experience, I had a really rough classroom in grade five and kudos really turned them around. And they are way better on behaving with each other just because they got used to feel the, the good feeling of saying some nice things to others. All right, let's go back to the quest. Now in my, task I can see in my tab of quest I can see that a lot of people have uh, gone through the shrine of kindness now in the shrine of debates there are a lot of people that already passed that task it says uh, here is a question for you what can we do to improve online learning and it's asking you to go to the discussion tab the discussion tab is another tab that you can admit or not that you can actually turn on or not and uh, here you can make them debate between each other or just make a comment uh, between each other. They can reply to each other. They can, and you can give XP whenever you see that somebody is doing something nice or saying something nice to each other or whenever they're saying the right thing or uh, contributing to the discussion that you have in your class. I'm gonna give points to this one and point to this one as well, because they're saying the class graph is cool. Use interactive group to give pupils a way to connect each other. I agree with you. So I'm gonna give you uh, that you completed your online activity and I'm gonna also give you points for being respectful online and you're leveling up with that. Uh, now, if I see the settings as a teacher, I can mark this as a self Based progress. Most of the quests today and most of the tasks today are marked as self-paced because I want you to go on your own pace and you can mark them as complete as soon as you feel them that they are complete. You can make the students track each other with this, but you can turn this off. And if you turn it off, only when you see them as a teacher complete in the overview, you can pass them here by marking them as tick. I'm marking them that Nelly Claff Catliff, she passed the task and she completed the quest. Or I can unmark them and she will have that task uncompleted. That can be set, can be turned on and off on the settings. You can also ena enable the class discussion tab in here in the settings and settings as well. Now I am going to go to the shrine of the companions, the next task that is open. The story is here and the task asks you to equip a pet and it gives you a hint. You cannot equip the pet in the pet tab. Your pet tab should be on this side on the screen or if you're using an app, that's my cell phone because of the background. If you're using an app, it should be on the downside of the screen right here. Let me, there we go. Right on the downside of the Classcraft app, you're gonna find pets and also the quests um, as a student. Uh, you can equip them and I'm gonna tell you now, I get let you some time to discover it on your own, but now I'm gonna tell you, you can equip them on your equipment tab. Whenever you can equip your gear, that's where you equip your pets as well. Let's see if uh, uh, some people have equipped some pets. Let's see. Let's see, not left, no, no, nobody seems to have been able to equip the, quest, the pet. Let's see, no one. Ah, uh, seems that no one has been able to equip the pet. 
let's see. Uh, yep. Yeah. I don't see no one with a with uh with a pet. You can equip them in the class equipment, and pets are completely uh optional. They don't do anything in game unless you want them to. You can create a, a rule for that, but it, there is no mechanic in the game of Classcraft that allows you to use the pet uh, as a as a system. Now, let's continue in the quest. Let's keep on going and see more. Uh, Shine of the Companions. I am going to make, some of you have passed already, so let's go to Shrine of Power. And the task in Shrine of Power says, one of, use one of the powers of your avatar. To use your powers, you just need to go to your avatar and click on the power and use it. As simple as that. This, this for example, will allow this perk that uh, we are, uh, I already had preset um allows the healer to get a 10 minute video meeting with the teacher so whoever's that this person whenever they use the power they can ask me to have a meeting with me and i can track who use what power up here on top right in the to do's sorry in the notifications that cedar white garden use leap of faith and nice uh good cliff use nature's guidance so it can track who use what power for for the from the teacher side right here in the notifications i'm going to be able to know who use what power if you use a power you pass that task i am going to continue let me see power uh also we have the shrine of the protection open and the shrine of protection here's the story and the task says with the money that you have earned in the quest, because every time you complete a task, you get, get XP and gold pieces, you're gonna be able to buy equipment in the equipment tab. I want you to change some of the equipment that you have, some of the gear that you have right now. You begin with some clothes. I want you to change some of the clothes in your avatar right now um, with the money that you have. You're gonna use the gold pieces to be able to change your avatar. Let me see if anybody is changing them. Let's see. So far I see they, this healer, look at that. This healer actually bought a different set of clothes. The normal healer has, uh, has a different side of a different type of clothes. This one also bought a different set of clothing. Uh, the normal healer has a different set of clothing and she did it by completing, uh, by going to an equipment tab right here on the left tab, uh, or in your app is going to be on the downside where all the other tools are. Now let's continue the quest. We're almost done with the quest. Let's see it. Uh, Shrine of Power, we completed. Now we go to Shrine of the Spirits. Shrine of the Spirits is the only task in this quest that I did not make self-pace. So right here, I also activated the enable assignments. So you have to submit something to be able to pass this, quest, this task. And I was waiting for enough people submitting enough things. Uh, Timber did, Avon did submit something. And I can check of that submission right here. I can check of that submission right here and I can click on giving feedback. Right now here, I can write a feedback on the submission, but first, obviously I need to watch the submission, need to see it. And I click here and I'm going to be able to download it, download it and I can see it, he completed. The task was to submit a screenshot of this activity. I can say, great job here and save. And that way I have given feedback to this person. And I can mark them as complete here or here. I am going to mark as complete everyone that has submitted something so that you can see the end of the quest. I'm going to mark as complete everyone that has submitted something. But if you also want to save some time, you can click here and apply to everyone the 
the verdict of the quest. You can say that everyone passed it or everybody didn't do it, and you can uh, pretty much set a response to everyone. But I would recommend giving feedback uh, first. All right, that was the last one. Now I can see the last task. And the last task says, the simple one, the top of the world. Use the message tab on Classcraft, located also on the left side um, or on the downside in the app, uh, to send a message to the GM game master. So send a message to me saying that you're done. And if you can, add a meme for extra flavor. I I'll usually ask my students to add memes just to make it funny. Uh, but just send a message to me saying hi or send a message to me saying um, that you're done and you can mark yourself as done in the quest. And that would be it for the quest. You can mark yourself as done and go to the final task here, the final battle that is not a task, it's just uh, the ending of the story. And you can write an ending to the story as you wish. If you don't feel that you could write a story, Classcraft has a story mode, which allows you to download a already pre-written safe story that you can use as a template for your quest. This one I, uh, I wrote on my own. I like to write my stories, write my stories, but whenever I don't have time, I use the templates uh, that Classcraft has in the story mode. Now that these quests are complete, I wanna show you. The last thing I'm gonna show you today is the tools of the teachers. Here I can see other tools that I can use in Classcraft to gamify my class and add extra flavor. One of the most fun one is the Raiders of the Bay. Kids love this one. When you uh, click here, you can actually have your students do a random event. This is completely random and it will create a random um, situation for the class. Let's see for ex uh, an example. Pet shop, you're now in a pet shop, take your pick. Every player must now show their pet to the camera. Last player to do so loses 10 points of damage. So if, you, if we were in an online class right now in this moment, I would ask every student to show a pet uh, in the camera right now. And they have to run and scramble around to try to show the pet. The last one to show their pet loses 10 health and they do not want to lose health. So they really want to show their pet and they will be scrambling around to show their pet. This is a random event and you can have them here in the class tools. You can also have boss battles. You make them battle the battle a fictional boss with questions. And every time they answer the question correctly, they do damage to the boss. But every time they, they, uh, they answer incorrectly, the boss does damage to them. And another cool tool that Classcraft has, there are many others, but another cool tool that Classcraft has that I recommend you to use is the Wheel of Destiny. It will pick a random student whenever you need to pick a random uh, student for a question or for an activity, or you can pick a random team uh, to be the participants on the activity. Like for example, right now is uh, uh, asking Nelly Catcliffe to step up and do uh, whatever random activity or a specific activity I want her to do. And it's completely random. It will go through all the players before it resets. So it, it, you'll be sure that it will have all the, um, uh, all the students will be able to participate. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions, Adam. Uh, it, it would, it, would that be possible or? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if there's something right at 930. We could probably also put them in the chat if you have questions. And if we don't get to them, um, we will also just have that uh, on record and, and can post in, in Whova as well. And, and also keep in mind that on the Whova app, under this uh, session, there is a chat, there's a question box and things like that. So there's an opportunity to keep a uh, um, conversation going. Understood. Uh... Yeah, next is at 10. So we do have a few minutes. We can see if some come through. Okay, so let me see if I can see some of the questions. I have been, uh, I haven't been able to see the chat, so I want to see the chat now. Um, let me see if I can see the questions here. 
Okay, okay, I can see it now. All right, let me see if I can see some other questions. Okay, it's a problem with the sounds. You have to train them before you equip them. That uh, that is correct, but there is one that you can equip uh, immediately. I think uh, because of the uh, specific events of Glasscraft. Glasscraft we've had will have events depending on on the season. Like for example, winter events, love events, um, uh, Halloween. There's another big one in Glasscraft that will they will give you like uh, free pets that you can equip almost immediately it says in progress done in one day oh uh, yeah that that that's usually um the way that they uh, train pets the students train pets is that they have to like go back to the pet every day and train them for i think five or ten days and then they will be able to equip them all right i have zero powerpoints so i can use one uh, you probably got some powerpoints um uh, I was doing the quest and saying the using twenty fix. Uh, yeah, all right, student twenty six. All right, some coding problems. Okie dokie. Wheel of Destiny is a way great way to call students during virtual school. Yes, especially camera shy ones. You can use the the Wheel of Destiny to call out uh, students and teams as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, next meeting is 10 a.m. Compatibility of, with iPads. I usually like uh, the computers, uh, the, the, the website base more, but uh, because the, the app in the in in phones and in iPads is a little bit clunky, especially the the um, the kudos side. I think it's not activated yet there, and I use that a lot. I, ra I rather the website side, but yeah, it's, com and it's compatible. Like you can use it in iPads and Android and, and yeah, it's easy to write the story and set the task. It's extremely easy, extremely easy. What age group have you used this app for? I use it from grade three and up, grade three and up. I have used it with every, uh, pretty much every setting that, I can, that you can think of, but uh, grade three and up. I have not had success using it in grade one or grade two. Um, there is an app that you can use. Uh, yes, you can use the app and you can use also laptops and computers. That's correct. Uh, how much you can you customize your abilities? Let me show you. You can click here on edit and you can customize everything. You can customize the behavior, the reason that you give points, the gifts that you take points away. You can customize your abilities completely. Let's say I want this, I don't know, get a cookie. Uh, this is the power to get a cookie, leap of faith. You use leap of faith and you get a cookie in class and you can click here. You can also set this, ta this um, powers to be collaborative. And if they use something that help others, they get XP. So whenever you click on this tab, they were gonna be, uh, they're gonna be able to have XP um, in the, um, every time you use that power. I do not recommend putting that on in everything because they're going to abuse of it. As, as soon as they know that they're gonna, they, they can have XP by using that power, they're gonna find ways of using it. Like for example, I have a kid that find out that every time that he gives help to somebody else, he gets XP, he's a healer. So every time he recovers some help to somebody else, he gets XP. So what he did is finding friends that purposely take damage so that he can heal them and get XP. And he found that, that, that mechanic in the game and he was abusing it, so I removed their way. Because if not, he was going to get a lot of level without actually showing learning. And this is some, something that I, I, one message that I really want to tell you. Um, tie XP to learning is important because if not, you are giving XP, XP is experience points, the yellow one. If not, you are turning XP into a carrot. What do I mean by that? Uh, you know the, the classic metaphor of putting the carrot in front of the, of, in front of the horse so that the horse can move forward. You are in danger of turning XP into that carrot to make the students go forward if you don't tie it to learning. If you want to uh, use Classcraft or any gamification um, to promote intrinsic motivation, you need to tie the XP 
or the points to demonstration of learning. Do not give them for free. Um, also, you can set up the pledges, the things that they have to do every time they fall in battle, meaning that they fall to zero uh, points in health. Right now I have, this is the, the preset, write a kudos to a classmate you've been in conflict with, short, uh, create a short video showing how you could have done better decisions, make a meme about the attitudes you could put forth to improve your remote, remote learning. So it's, they're, they're, there are supposed to be positive things. You, you, you don't want to punish them. You really don't want to punish them. You don't want to turn into uh, turn the gamified system into a punishment because there is not going to be fun. You can customize the random events, the random events that happen. Right now, I have only these five, but they, you can put as many as you want, and you can put them, uh, make them uh, part of the setting of your classroom. You can customize the way uh, how much how many points they can get for writing a kudos to somebody on how much uh, the sender gets and much how much the receiver gets every time you write a kudos to somebody. You can customize the game rules, how much XP they need to level up. You can customize everything. In Glasscraft, you have a lot of possibility of customization here in the settings tab, but obviously you only have this as a teacher, not as a student. You cannot change it as a student. Let me see if I can see more of the chat. All right. Uh, story mode with a pre-written pre -written storyline, that's true with the new, uh, it should run well, that's, that's great. Uh, some teachers are also making a scavenger hunts that I had high hints inside instead of stories, that is also fantastic. I have a, a teacher um, that used the quest that you played as a massive quest, they created a massive quest, and the, the students had to go to different uh, rooms in their in the school to be able to discover the different tasks, and all the tasks were STEM related, and it was done for the science fair, the STEM day, they, it was called. It was called the STEM adventure. It was one of the most creative ways I've seen Classcraft being used. Um, you can connect Classcraft with Google Classroom. That is uh, correct. You can, uh, if you have a Google Classroom set up, you can just uh, import the students of Google Classroom into Classcraft, and it will set up the the, the account with them. You can also, in that uh, the quest as task, you can put a Google form, and uh, you pretty much you can pretty much uh, put it as an assignment in there. Uh, after the year, the student have to create a new character. Yes, if you are having a new class, your the students will have to create a new character. Um, they can archive the character that they had before, and you can have them say they can have them save in their in their account as a character, and they can pretty much have a a hall of fame of characters that have completed the full. Um, the full year. I have a stu a students that have, that have three characters completed in their Hall of Fame, and they're very proud of them, very proud of their the characters that they have created. That, that I have a student that this year, his mission is have one character in level 18, which is the top level, level 18 char character of each one of the types. So he has a healer, he has a guardian, now he's going for the mage. Uh, how has using Classcraft impacted on your students? engagement engagement goes through the roof you have you ever had kids asking for homeworks during holiday this happens in classcraft they ask for more quests when is the next quest in that break kid go to have fun with your family and this is this is not the moment that you are going to ask for a quest do you haven't you realized that this is actually homework Okay, all right, you want another quest? Let's, here we go. Let's, let's do this. All right, let's go, let's go with another quest. And they're gonna be asking for more ways of getting XP because Classcraft has turned uh, assessment into a low key safe failure environment. Failing in Classcraft doesn't hurt. It's like, okay, I lost HP. I can go back down to zero. I'm going to complete um, a pledge and I can keep on learning. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not like, a test that that grade will turn into um, a, 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 a punishment from the parents sometimes, uh, sadly. It, it's just a game, as it should be. Learning should be fun, 
and learning uh, should be about um, having fun and playing with what you're learning and experimenting and failing as well. So Glasscraft made failure um, something safe to experience. All right, I think we need to wrap up. Uh, thank you, Adam, for letting me host this. Thank you, Amy, uh, for the support and being here. I imagine that uh, the questions are going to be there and I will be going back to answer some of the questions that I can see. Um, thank you for playing with me. I love playing with people. Uh, I hope I see you in other um, events. Thanks so much, Carlos. And everyone remember, there's also conversation on Whova that can continue. So if you have any ideas or resources or questions, uh, please put them on there. Um, again, yeah, thanks so much, Carlos. That was awesome. Thank you. Have a good conference, everyone.